This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. It's thanks to their support that our videos like this and more are possible. We recreated our website using Squarespace and love using it. You can check out the link in the description. If you need a website yourself, get 10% off by going to squarespace.com slash make everything. A big item that's been on my list to eventually make is a light bulb. But first, I also want to make some of its predecessors. How we made light before light bulbs. With Halloween happening, what better time to make what used to be used as one of the most common sources of light? A candle to light up a jack-o'-lantern. People have been carving vegetables and gourds to use as lanterns for centuries, but the first jack-o'-lanterns appeared in Ireland in the early 19th century. Back then, instead of a pumpkin, turnips, potatoes, or beets were often used to carve scary faces. They were intended to scare away evil spirits during the days leading up to Halloween. A possible origin of the name is the old folk tale based on the story of Stingy Jack. Jack was a drunkard and a gambler who encounters Satan on a lonely road. Before the devil can take Jack to hell, he convinces Satan to climb into a tree and get him an apple as his last meal. Once Satan was in the tree, Jack tricked him and surrounded the tree with crucifixes to trap him. In order to be freed, Satan agreed to never take Jack's soul to hell. Years later, when Jack died, his sinful lifestyle prevented him from making it to heaven. And because the devil had promised not to take his soul, Jack was doomed to wander purgatory for the rest of eternity with the only light emanating from a lantern he fashioned from a carved turnip to light his way. Hence, the jack-o'-lantern. It was Washington Irvin's 1920 story about the headless horseman who wore a jack-o'-lantern in place of his head that solidified its place. Since then, pumpkin carving has gone from a ritual to something of a sport. Today, more people compete to make bigger and more detailed carving into their pumpkins. Before I start making the waxes for my candles, I need a wick. And the most common material is cotton. And I previously went to Texas and picked cotton and spun it with my suit. And I have a few leftover strands here I'm going to use. But you don't have to go to Texas because you can also grow it. I've been growing this guy for two years now. So a little treatment that's done to candle wicks is to add a little bit of borax and salt. We had the borax when I was in California, and I had the salt from Utah, and that'll kind of slow down the burning of the wick. Got about two tablespoons of borax, just gonna smash it up, and about a tablespoon of salt to about a cup of water, and soak the wicks. Looks like it's pretty much all dissolved into there. It's turned fairly dark, which uh, probably means there's some impurities, but I'll just add a little extra scent. And add in my wicks and let them soak for 24 hours. Now for the first candle, made using leftover lard from the pig I used to make a football. First, it will need to be rendered by cooking all the fat out and straining out the solid meat bits. What are we doing today? We're making candles. Oh boy, out of what? You. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> All right, so I'm making a candle out of some pig fat. So I'm gonna try and make a mold out of this guy. I'm gonna try doing it with clay. Heat that guy back up, make a piggy. Let's see if we can do a little baby powder, make it easy to release. Let's see if we can do this in two pieces. Top half. And the good news is wax is pretty carvable, so I can touch it up afterwards. And get these feet out. I'm gonna be a little messed up. <laughs> Fill them in, you might have very fat legs now, but I'm fine with that. Put it all together. Probably a way better way to do this that somebody's gonna tell me in the comments. <coughs> Alexa, what's the melting point of pig fat? Hmm, I don't know that. A lot of help you are. So before I pour my candle, since I'm making a pig candle out of pig fat, I'm curious if I can also make the wick and make it 100% pig candle. Most common uh, material used for a wick is cotton. I haven't heard of animal hair though. Got my football, still has plenty of pig hair on it. Let's see if I can make a wick. It's probably gonna smell horrible. That's probably the reason it's not done. Also have some wool, give that a shot too. And you can see how disgusting of burnt hair smelling candles I can make. Ooh, a little bit of that. And some wool. So 
So we got cotton, we got wool, and we got pig hair. There's the cotton. There we go. Hey, it actually works. Nope, smells amazing, like burnt hair. Ugh. I feel like it kind of works, but not really effectively enough. Smells horrible. Burnt hair, pig fat. There's definitely a reason cotton is used for the candle wicks. All right, so I think I'm just gonna use a regular cotton wick then after that. So just kind of dip it in a little bit of fat. I'm gonna try and get it in there longly. I feel like this might not end well, but let's give it a shot anyways. Oh, it's leaking. It smells pretty nasty. This isn't working very well. The wick. All right, so let these guys harden a bit and now let's open them up and see, see my really bad attempt at molding a pig did. A piece of the rump. Hey, it's got ears. So the good thing about doing this for a Halloween special is that the more dilapidated and creepy it comes off, the better. Look at its bottom half. <laughs> it's a little misaligned. Piece of his face fell off. <laughs> Seance to the pig gods. It's a push-up. Smells horrible, but looks good. I think that looks pretty good. I think this is just insulting. I think I made some, at least one halfway decent candle out of pig's fat. Next I'm gonna use a different animal to make another type of candle. So besides tallow, another compound that can be used for making candles is beeswax, which I previously collected when I was doing lipstick. Instead of doing a molded candle, I'm gonna do a different type called a dipped candle. I have some of the wicks I prepared with the borax solution, and I have a bunch of nuts and washers tied to them just for extra weight to make it a little bit easier. It's just a simple process of dipping it into the wax and cool it and then just build up a layer of it. Oh, rub and dub. Three maids in a tub. And who do you think were there? So. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, and all of them gone to the fair. I'm all three of those now. I've been a butcher, I've been a baker, and now I'm a candlestick Here's maker. Here's something I found on reference. Yeah. I'm just gonna let these guys dry for a couple hours. They look a lot better than all the videos I watched. They have character. I feel like I should make a birthday cake for these. This is a Halloween episode. Happy birthday, Satan. Tallow and beeswax are where many traditional candles are made from. But today, most are made from paraffin and soy wax. Paraffin is a petroleum product that I'm gonna take a stab at later in the future. But I've already previously grown and pressed my own soybeans for the oil. But to turn a vegetable oil into a solid wax requires a process called hydrogenation, where an unsaturated fat becomes fully saturated by exposing it to hydrogen. It's a little bit of a complicated process and the ideal equipment and catalyst I needed didn't arrive in time, but I'm gonna try it anyways to see if I can get at least a partial success. This process is the same that's done to turn vegetable oils into margarine and can be more or less done to most vegetable oils. So since it's Halloween, why not try making it out of an actual pumpkin? <laughs> Gooey. Gooey, gooey goodness. This is for our new ASMR channel. And I'm, I'm, um, uh, uh, there, I'm done. After a couple hours now, the seeds are all dried and ready for the next step. And in the past, I've extracted oil from seeds using an oil press, but that's been kind of a pain. and I'm really frustrated with it. So I'm gonna try the commercial method that's used, and that's using a compound called hexane, which dissolves out all the oil and then allows you to separate it and boil off the hexane. Hexane's pretty toxic chemical. It's kind of controversial to use, but when you boil it off at the end, it should be completely gone. So be very careful when working with this. And the next step is to grind up the seeds. Then mix in the hexane and absorb all the oil. And strain out the solid matter. Then I can distill out the low boiling hexane completely and save that to be used again later. Once it reaches a temperature above its boiling point, I know it's completely gone. So now I have some pumpkin seed oil, the next step is to do the hydrogenation, and that requires hydrogen. 
And the easiest way to get that is from water. So I'm going to try and just run some electricity through it. I break apart the bonds and I'll try to capture that inside this tube. I did a test of this. It wasn't able to get enough pressure to actually inflate the balloon. So I'm going to use a different type of balloon that isn't as elastic. Gotta get the helium out of here though. Oh yeah, whoa, that's really high. <laughs> I'm going to do all my voiceover in this voice now. My name is Andy and this is how to make everything. I'm getting a lot of lightheaded here. Anyways. I attempted a very crude setup to get the hydrogen and vegetable oil to react, but overall the setup was much too inefficient, and the yield was just a thin layer of saturated fats on the surface. But this is something I'll definitely take another stab at later. Meanwhile, I can still use a pumpkin seed oil as a lamp, and so hollowed out a small pumpkin, filled it with the oil, and inserted a wick. Done. Pumpkin lamp. Alexa, good night. Okay. In preparation, I also grew my own pumpkins for the jack-o'-lantern. Uh, the uh, pumpkin took over almost the little garden to keep cutting it back. And with all that, we grew one pumpkin. But unfortunately, some heavy rains caused it to start rotting before I could pick it. So it turned out a little more abstract. Now to put my canvas to the test, in some jack-o'-lanterns. See why they switched to pumpkins. Got all my candles lit, and they all actually worked pretty good. Doesn't even smell too piggy. Not too bad. Even got my pumpkin seed oil in a little lamp. So, happy Halloween! Thanks again to Squarespace for making this episode possible. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Create a beautiful website with their all-in-one platform, no coding experience required. They have a ton of templates to choose from, so you don't have to start your designs from scratch. Squarespace provides award-winning 24-7 customer support and it's simple to set up or transfer an existing domain to Squarespace. So all your websites live in one place. We've been using Squarespace for a while now and really love how easy it is to use and how great our content looks on their platform. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com slash make everything to get 10% off of your first purchase. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.